Good morning, everybody. It's BDF 44 coming at you with another video. So we now know what the NBA Finals matchup is going to be. The Boston Celtics were defeated by the Miami Heat uh, yesterday to conclude that series. The Heat move on uh, and win it in six. And they will be running into my very own Los Angeles Lakers who were able to do away with the Denver Nuggets in five. As predicted by many, and I think... I predicted it, but I'm going to go as far as to say that I had no idea what was going to happen in this series. And any prediction that I may have made in regards to this series probably probably was contradicted by a few things that I said in concern, as usual. I'm always one that says we can win in five, but we can lose in seven. I'm just a pessimistic fan at times. But at the end of the day, the Lakers were victorious in five like they were in the previous two series. And uh, we are four wins away from our 17th NBA championship and LeBron James's fourth NBA championship as well as AD's very first. So this is a very, 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 very important time. Uh, obviously, the bubble has been a raging success. I'm happy to say that I was wrong about whether or not they would be able to complete this uh, with, with no COVID uh, positive test. The Lakers, uh, excuse me, the NBA has been um, successful, just, just very, very successful in what they've attempted. And... Uh, me personally, before I go into the, to what I think is going to happen, I would like to see the, the, the NBA adapt to bubble systems going forward, even without COVID. And I'm not talking about all season long, but particularly for playoffs. I know that that's not realistic. I know that that doesn't benefit anybody because you want to make sure that you have playoff games in different cities. Uh, packed arenas and things like that are a dream right now, but we do believe that we'll get to that point again someday. And um, so it doesn't... In my mind, it only benefits the player if they were to have a bubble system of something of that nature in the playoffs. And the reason why I believe that is because no travel, no travel. And for me, for me personally, that does put an asterisk on this championship for the Lakers or anybody the Heat uh, to a degree because there was no travel. And at no time in the history of the sport has there ever been a playoff series without plane rides, without flights, without uh, hotel sits, uh, 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 stays and things of that nature. There's just a certain um, intensity that comes with NBA playoff basketball as we know it that just did not uh, take place in this bubble uh, just simply because of the lack of people that were able to view the games, lack of travel. So um, while it, it posed some challenges in its own right, and it's, it's still extremely valuable of a championship because of how uh, extreme the circumstances were and how much of a, a sacrifice it was for everyone who participated. Um, but no travel. And no travel means a lot more rest on the body, particularly for older players like LeBron James and, and, and Iguodala and things like that. Uh, it helped them dramatically. And, of course, the, the Lakers were also helped a great deal um, by not having to play in altitude playing road games in Denver uh, could have affected the way the games went as well. Same goes for Utah, who play in altitude as well. Uh, they just didn't have the benefit of of a real home court advantage that they would normally have. And the same, too, for, for our city as well, with the, with the presence of celebrities and things of that nature uh, that just were not present to bring, bring about that type of intensity, playoff intensity that we would expect from regular NBA play. So... Um, that's what I have to say about that. I would love to see them just put the bubble in maybe for a series, maybe one series, um, every playoffs or maybe maybe the finals for, for those series that have to go back and forth of uh, 4,000 miles and things of that nature. I would like to see maybe a bubble situation take place there. That way Toronto doesn't have to fly to Golden State and then Golden State doesn't have to fly back and forth to Toronto just to make the series happen. I just feel like that even though it benefits a great deal financially and it puts the fans in a position to once again be a uh, part of the part of everything uh that that lack of travel i think helps for the players long term and short term so yeah yeah less travel more basketball i love it and i also love the fact that basketball is being played well into uh, october for some reason or another i have enjoyed this about as much as i've enjoyed any sporting season ever just because of how it's been structured now I found myself in a situation where I'm watching a playoff game on my birthday. Literally never happens. I was born in August. Um, got a situation where I'm drafting my fantasy football teams while I'm watching NBA, NBA uh, basketball play. Like, that's something that 
I never knew I needed. Like, <laughs> I never knew that I wanted to see football and basketball being played at the same time uh, this soon, you know, rather than later on in uh, throughout the year. So uh, I would love to see the NBA adapt to this schedule, maybe take some things from this, this situation and keep them um, because it's made for some good play and it's made for some fun eras, uh, a fun era to watch. <laughs> okay, enough of my rambling about that. What we are talking about now is the Miami Heat versus the Los Angeles Lakers. And what I think I'm going to see in that series is a whole lot of Anthony Davis and a whole lot of three-point shooting. Uh, that's going to be key. Because the Utah Jazz, excuse me, the, Utah Jazz, the, the Miami Heat are a team that don't play a lot of uh, man-to-man -man basketball. Uh, they haven't been anywhere in these playoffs. They love throwing different types of zones at you. And from what the analysts are saying, they like to throw uh, you in position. They like to put you in positions to do things that you don't feel comfortable doing. Um, so I expect that. We have questionable three-point shooting. I felt and still feel we are the worst remaining three-point shooting team in the bubble. That's not saying a whole lot, being there's only these two teams left, but they have been. Uh, I felt the Lakers have been the worst three-point shooting team in the playoffs it's all playoffs long to be completely honest with you and we've had games where we've made threes it's not like we are inadequate in three-point shooting they're just uh, plenty of teams better than us at that particular thing but guys like KCP Danny Green LeBron and AD even Rondo now Kuzma now uh as well Kuzma always could but those guys are shooting now we're gonna need them to shoot and hit threes this is not the time at all to try to shy away from shooting the, the three-point shot. They're going to force us into shooting, and we need to make them. The guy that I trust the most in a three-point shooting contest right now on our team is by far KCP. Now, I row, he runs hot and cold. So if he goes 0 for 20 in this series, not going to be surprised, unfortunately. But he's played so well, which has surprised me, that I've now become accustomed to seeing him play well. So I hope that that continues. Uh, he's, he's turning into one of those guys that you're like, oh, does he, is he going to be one of those guys that has a reputation for showing up when it matters most? And that uh, is something that, that unfortunately, a lot of professionals don't get a chance to show because they find themselves on bad teams, uh, playing their primes in, in situations that don't have playoff aspirations. And you just never find out if guys have that ability unless they find themselves in those circumstances. And right now, as much as KCP has struggled while wearing a purple and gold, uh, he's playing the best basketball uh, of his Laker career right now in our first ever playoff appearance with him being involved in it. And I would go as far as to say his first playoff appearance, period, because I don't remember Detroit making the playoffs at all while he was playing for the Pistons. They may have, but I can guarantee you they did no damage if they did. So this is a very new experience for him one way or another, and he's... Uh, He's passed the test with flying, flying colors, I gotta admit. You know, if I'm if I'm gonna speak of somebody who, who has impressed me thoroughly in these playoffs, KCP is one of the first names you're gonna hear. He's just been a fantastic, fantastic um, anomaly for us, basically scoring the basketball. I know he can defend. He's always been pretty good at defense. In fact, he's underachieved in that area because I thought he was a better defender than he's shown us. But offensively, particularly shooting that three, he has really, really, really kicked some ass. So excuse my language, but I've been very pleased with him. Kuzma, polar opposite, unfortunately. I think he's regressed quite a bit. I think he's shown us that his confidence is not where it needs to be. He's shown us that he's not flourishing. He's not he's not doing well in this role. Um, and that's not surprising to me, unfortunately, because I never thought that he was ready for that role. I think if this were three years from now, he'd definitely be ready for this role. But right now, he's not. Uh, but the good thing is he's been tossed into the fire, and sometimes that, that brings about... Uh, a lot of good in the long run but we have to go through these growing pains with him just like we went through growing pains with all the kids that we've had every kid that we've brought in over the last four years we've watched them go through struggles and we've watched them play really really well so we know what they're capable of Kyle Kuzma's no exception in that regard but he has really really taken some steps back in a time where other young players some of who are much younger than him are taking steps forward and even becoming stars so it, it becomes frustrating but I think for him, what really, really helps is the fact that he does not have a high draft stock past following him around. 
we know that he outplayed his draft stock being drafted, I believe 26, 27, something like that, in that draft. He has pretty much played up to that in these playoffs while having exceeded that with flying colors during the regular season and in his rookie season especially. So Kyle Kuzma, I just want to see him get back into a place where he's comfortable, and I don't know that he can find that in this mix. I think too much pressure is on him to uh, perform in choice moments as opposed to getting a volume of opportunities like most players his age are getting on their various teams. He's being given the ball in specific situations and being told that he has to make something happen when those when he does get the ball, and that just seems to be a little bit too much pressure for him uh, with the stakes being so high. But it won't be next time he finds himself in the situation, and he's going to play better. There's no question to me about whether Kyle Kuzma will eventually make us forget about these struggles. His natural ability to score the basketball, his intensity on the defensive end, even though he's not as effective as he'd like to be, he gives you effort on the defensive end. And as I've said many times in the open court, he's simply an artist. I don't know, I don't know that he really has tapped into that yet, uh, but I've seen glimpses of it. I don't know that the team is set up for him to be able to exploit that gift of his game because in the open court a lot of times he's not the recipient and when he is the recipient again a whole lot of pressure you got to make the assist happen for LeBron that that in and of itself receiving a pass from LeBron James it's a lot of pressure on that as opposed to receiving a pass from Lonzo Ball both great classers but it means something different when you receive the ball from either of them and I think that pressure that meaning is what I think Kyle Kuzma struggles with it's just, it's just too important that he don't make mistakes in a time when he needs to be given room to do so. And uh, it's just a bad fit. I, I personally didn't like the trade uh, proposed about a year ago with him going to Sacramento for Bojan Bogdanovic. Um, but at this point, I think he would be better somewhere like Sacramento, where there's no pressure on him to do anything but develop. And eventually he would get back to his, his natural uh, scoring with ease ways as to which he can give you 40 points in three quarters like we've seen him do. So I have not lost sight of what he can do, nor do I believe that his struggles will last forever. But what I am saying is the pressure of being on this team uh, appears to be more than he really can handle at the moment. <laughs> and yet, we're still here. He's still here. And the good thing about that is, in, this, in spite of having what I consider a down season for him, he is holding the Western Conference champion trophy. <laughs> He's sitting down with the trophy in his hands despite being play, having played so poorly. So what that tells me is he's still going to be able to gain confidence from the accomplishment of being on a team like this despite playing so poorly. When, it, when people look back on his career years from now, they're not going to really think about how poorly he played. They're going to remember that he won championships with LeBron James. And that's going to look real good on his resume, no matter what his numbers are. So assuming we win this championship, which I think the Lakers will, uh, I, I believe Kyle Kuzma will come back better. But he's going to have to work on his game. He's going to have to work on his footwork. He's going to have to work on his moves, his turnaround jumpers, and things of that nature. When he was drafted, they were raving about his work ethic in Utah, how you didn't have to motivate this guy, how he's the only person who would be in the gym all night long, all day long, working on his stuff. Well, he's going to have to get back to that. I think he lost some of that playing for the Lakers, and rightfully so. Uh, bag opportunities came about, modeling, things of that nature. Put him in a position to get more money outside of basketball, and I think he let his attention kind of get away from basketball, and as, as a result, um, he's not as refined of a basketball player as he should be with his natural ability in this much time in the league thus far. He needs to work on certain things, and I think the desire, determination, and the habits are there for good work ethic going forward. So I hope I'm right about this and we end up seeing Kyle Kuzma break out at some point. Um, but I don't expect it to be in this series, and I'm concerned that guys like Tyler Hero, the presence of a Tyler Hero is going to have a similar effect, effect as the presence of a, um, Michael Porter. Even though Michael Porter was kind of going at Kuzma a little bit, he was taking it to him more so, kind of looked like it was personal. I still think that ultimately just the idea of guys breaking out who are younger than him, who may not even be considered as talented as him, may have a negative effect on the kid. And felt it felt like it already has. 
So that's that's one aspect of the finals. I'm looking forward to seeing how Kyle Kuzma uh, just plays, obviously, and uh, hopefully we can get better out of him. Uh, LeBron James. Now, this is the LeBron James series. Um, even though I said that AD is probably going to be what we see the most of, I expect LeBron James to get finals MVP for two reasons. One, Pat Riley. This is personal between those two. They have issues that have not been probably worked out. <laughs> and if they did work them out, they weren't worked out in such a way that they're both um, wishing each other uh, success and all that. They would like to rip each other's heads off. And I'm pretty damn certain they're going to attempt to <laughs> on the basketball floor uh, with their respective teams. Uh, Pat Riley squad, we already know it's going to shoot a lot of threes. They're going to play a lot of zone. They're going to have a whole lot of production from guys like Jordan, Goran Drag Dragic. Um, obviously, Bam Adebayo's. It's not safe for me mentally to say that he just broke out in this bubble. Because the reality is, I've known of him to be an all-star already. He's already a defensive player that you have to be you have to deal with a defensive player of the year candidate uh, a guy who can shoot threes a guy that rebounds a ball plays with a lot of energy plays above the rim you can put the ball on the floor he's getting better at that kind of thing his skill set is evolving before our very eyes so I think for me it's equivalent to a breakout even though he's already made an all-star team even though we've already seen what he can do, even though his team has been one of the better teams all year long. The reality is, I think it's because of his elevated play that they are where they are. If he doesn't dominate Daniel Tice, I think the Celtics probably win that series. Uh, there were a lot of things that, that played into that series being the way that it was, but ultimately, they had no answer for Bam. Unfortunately for Bam, we do. In fact, we have several answers for Bam. And Bam is not going to be able to run amok like he did in the last series um and I, and I said this I look at him and Jamal Murray in regards to facing the Lakers similarly in the previous series Jamal Murray with the Clippers was able to go completely plum loco on them at all times against the Lakers he went plum loco but he limped out of the series you understand what I'm saying like he still was able to get his numbers he was still able to act a fool but we threw so much physicality at him that he didn't leave the series healthy Bam's about to run into that and I don't wish bad health on anybody, certainly not Bam. But what I'm saying is, he was able to go up against Daniel Tice and, and Ennis Cantor and, 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 and young, young boy uh, Robert Williams. That's not what we're bringing in. We're bringing Dwight Howard. We're bringing JaVale McGee, although McGee's not playing that great. I expect him to be wide awake for the finals. I really do. He's had some rest. And he's, he's recovering from an ankle and things of that nature. So I expect JaVale to play better than he's played in this previous series, in this upcoming series. And, of course, Anthony Davis is the defensive assignment that, that Bam is going to be drawing most of the time. I don't like that for Bam. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. As, as, as much as I've been singing Bam's praises and I think he's becoming somebody you have to deal with, eh, he, ain't, he ain't that. He ain't Anthony Davis. That's a different level, obviously. And, 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 and it's going to be very difficult for him to push his weight around and do some of those above-the-rim jams and things like that when Anthony Davis is, is patrolling. It's just not going to be that kind of party. We're going to throw a lot at him, and he's going to have to deal with it. Um, so that's one thing. Um, another thing I, I, I'm paying attention to is Goran Dragic. Goran Dragic is somebody who's been in this league for a very long time, but still plays like a very young player. Uh, he shoots the ball. He has a lot of sauce, a lot of deck moves, things like that. And he's playing sound defense for his, for his level of defense. He's giving you a lot of defense, uh, playing team defense very well for their team. I'm looking at... Um, who's going to be guarding him, which I'd imagine will be Caruso a lot of the time. That's going to be a very interesting matchup for me uh, if it plays out the way that I think it will. Caruso's a, uh, becoming one of the better defenders. He had an, a really, really good series against Denver uh, from a plus, plus minus standpoint. He didn't shoot the ball particularly well, but the things that he did benefited his team as much, if not more, than anyone else when you look at his plus minus, particularly in that last game. He is someone that is helping us a lot, and we're going to need him against those dynamic guards that the, the uh, Miami Heat are going to be tossing out there. Um, Kendrick Nunn hasn't really had a great playoffs, kind of had his minutes taken away. They have a log jam at the guard. I expect to see him play well in these finals because he's been a name that's kind of forgotten, and he was runner-up for Rookie of the Year, if I'm not mistaken. Not Tyler Hero, not 
not Duncan Robinson. It was Kendrick Nunn. And one of the reasons why they're so um, successful in the Eastern Conference is because they have that type of depth. Kendrick Nunn is somebody we're going to have to pay attention to. He's capable of going off just like Tyler, just like Duncan, just like Bam, just like Drogic. They have a team full of guys that can do it. DJ, you've heard me mention DJ a lot. He is going to be important. His length is going to be like that of um, uh, Jeremy Grant. He's their Jeremy Grant. And I would go as far as to say he's as good as Jeremy Grant. Just simply as good. Very, very electrifying. Can shoot a little bit. Plays defense very well. Extremely long arms. Extremely athletic. Pretty damn fast. He can keep up with you. He can simply keep up with you. And he's going to give you all you can handle. The only thing wrong with his situation is, again, log jam. You know, he doesn't get a full set of minutes. But that is somebody who's going to give our bench fits. Uh, Jimmy Butler's Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler's one of the underappreciated guys at that level of superstardom. Um, you just don't see a whole lot of fanfare um, talk about Jimmy. When people talk about Jimmy, they're not talking about how dominant of a basketball player they are. He is. They're talking about how much of a, um, a tough guy he is on his teammates. He's like, a, he's like a baby Kobe in terms of being tough and hard on his teammates. He has a reputation. He's taking it all over the league, and he's run through a bunch of kids that just aren't strong enough to play with him. Now, he's found a team that fits his style, a, 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 a front office that matches his intensity and his wily, crazy type of attitude, and Pat Riley's just as nuts as he is. And it's one of those situations where they just mesh well, and they're in the NBA Finals because of it. And I think that he's the head of the snake when you're talking about the Miami Heat. Even though they have a bunch of talented players, some I could argue may have even higher upside than what Jimmy's level of superstardom is right now because I think Tyler Hero might actually be that kind of guy. But at the same time, um, he's the guy right now, and he's the guy that they're going to be looking to to close for them, and he's damn good at it. You're going to have to match his intensity. Him and LeBron James have a... Uh, history going back decades, almost a decade more or less, in uh, playoff basketball. We know they know each other. It's going to be chippy. It's going to be a battle. LeBron will win it like he always does. I love Jimmy Butler. Again, just like Bam and AD, same thing. It's different tiers, bro. As much of a, a respectful star that I think Jimmy is, and I would have loved to see Jimmy on the Lakers, um, it is no conversation to be had when it comes to who's going to Who's going to lead their team to victory between the two of those guys? We've already seen that movie a million times. It's going to be LeBron. It should always be LeBron. Um, and I'm not saying that because I'm a Laker fan. If Jimmy was on our team and LeBron was still a Heat, I would say the Heat are going to beat us because they got LeBron James. <laughs> that's pretty much the end of that. Um, so that's that's one thing. Uh, Dwight Howard's played so well. I, I look for him to continue to push his weight around. Do the same thing to Bam that he did to, uh, to, to, to Jokic. And understanding that as good as Bam is, he's not as good as Jokic. So our most difficult task is behind us for a guy like Dwight Howard. You've already seen the best you're going to see. Bam is good, but you've seen the best you're going to see. We should, we should have success against Bam if, if Dwight's bringing that same intensity. And don't underestimate Bam's ability to pass the ball. We talk about Jokic being the best passing center of all time. No one will ever debate that here. It's, that's, that's solidified in my mind. However... There are other guys in the league that pass the ball at the center position, and one of them that I didn't realize was as good as he is, is Bam Adebayo. So pay very close attention to Bam Adebayo's, Adebayo's passing ability because he's going to bring it, and he's going to bring it off, often. Uh, Tyler Hero, the sauce king. But I wasn't surprised to see him not bounce back and have another 37-point game because he's a youngster and he wasn't ready for that. It was sort of like being super high on Kyle Kuzma after he did 40 points in three quarters. Like, yes, he did it. He did that. And it happened, and we haven't seen it in a very long time. And I, I would not go as far as to put that on Tyler Hero, but at the same time, when you're dealing with young players, you got to understand, they're not going to be consistent. They may give you glimpses of who they're going to be five years from now at some random basketball game, and you won't see any of that for like another year or two years. But the point is they're capable. And kids will always show you who they are. They will give you glimpses. If a kid is really, really good at what he does, you will see glimpses of that. Let me just a second. Let me fix my food situation here. Bear with me, you guys.
Um, so that's one thing I'm looking at in regards to the Miami Heat uh, versus the Los Angeles Lakers. They got a lot of guys like that. Duncan Robinson. Everyone here who's watching my video, excuse my language, or excuse me, messing with the camera, I should say. Everyone here who's watching my video should understand right now that Duncan Robinson is capable of dropping 40 on you right now, all from behind the arc. I just want to say that so that there's no confusion about who I believe Duncan Robinson is. I know that he was in, uh, he came from a, 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 a Division three school. I understand that he was a, a relatively average player. I understand that he's made his living off of being more or less one dimensional. And I also understand that with that dimension, he is very powerful. Um, and you have to deal with him. We've seen guys like this before, the JJ Reddicks, the Kyle Corvers, um, or, or higher degree, Peja Stojakovic, um, you know, higher than that, Ray Allen. We've seen shooters who aren't amazing at other things, but still are able to get themselves into the Hall of Fame even. Obviously, you're going to talk about the best shooters of all time, Clay Thompson and Steph Curry. You're going to talk about a guy like Kobe Bryant. You're going to talk about guys like, uh, obviously, Michael Jordan, super scorers and things like that who have more dimensions than a guy like Duncan Robinson. But the point is, the very, very, very point I'm trying to make is, pure scorers still have places in this league. And sometimes pure scorers don't always have many dimensions. But the bottom line is, you put them in their spots and they could kill you. And that's exactly what Duncan Robinson is capable of. He can murder you by himself, all from the arc, just like Klay Thompson. And we need to keep our perimeter defense as the most important thing we're doing. I don't care if Dragic is getting layups, if it means we're doing a good job behind that arc. Because the Miami Heat are by far the best three-point shooting team in the Eastern Conference. And they are going to bring all that they have, including Duncan Robinson, to our front doorstep. And they are the type of team that you can be more talented than them, and they'll still outshoot you. So you must be disciplined behind the three-point arc. That stuff that we saw from Kyle Kuzma against, uh, against uh, Porter, yeah, that kind of defensive play around the perimeter will get us beat. We will lose games that way. This is not a situation. You saw the type of uh, points that the Miami Heat put up in the final three minutes of that game last night. If you watched the Miami Heat, rather than that game against the Celtics two nights ago, if you watched that game, that score was tied with like seven minutes to six minutes to go in the fourth quarter. And they ended up winning that thing by like 15, 20 points. It's because a guy like Duncan Robinson went completely off to go along with Bam Adebayo's heroic uh, offensive uh, display. You can't sleep on their shooters and if a couple shooters get in foul trouble guess what they can bring up off the bench more shooters so that's what miami has that we don't just an endless supply of scores everywhere much more consistent much more talented role-playing scores than we have uh, they don't have anthony davis they got jimmy but they don't have a lebron james but their rest of their team is full of shooters so be, be very mindful of that. We're going to need our Danny Greens. We're going to need our KCPs. We're going to need our Kuzma. We're going to need our stars. Rondo, all of them will have to shoot and shoot well. And uh, that should help. I like the fact that Denver played a lot of zone. Because as, as I was thinking in the, in the previous series, if we run into the heat, it's going to be like a practice mode for what the heat run. Denver ran zone like a madman. All different types of zone. The heat do the same. We should not have as much trouble with the zone in this series as we had in the previous series because of it. I expect our team to be able to handle that zone better, and I'll be very disappointed if we don't. We've got to play well against the zone. Um, what else, what else, what else, what else? There's so much. Um, coaching battle. Look, this is when our coaches have to really get their, get their shine on. We've out, we've, we have been fortunate enough to run the two two average coaches to start this series in what I consider Mike D'Antoni, even though he's an innovative coach, he's average because he doesn't coach defense, so that balances it out to average for me. Uh, and uh, Terry Stotts, whom I respect, but just don't think uh, of him as an extraordinary coach. Uh, Mike Malone is on the rise. He made some fantastic adjustments. I thought that he uh, got better in this previous series. That's what I'll say about Mike Malone. I believe that he's a better coach today than he was going into that series. He's growing on me by the second. And obviously Eric Spolster right now, having out coached Brad Stevens, 
pretty, pretty solidly. Uh, is considered the best coach in the league today, which kind of surprises me to a degree um, because a lot of people haven't been able to shake that LeBron James's coach um, moniker that tends to follow guys and doesn't give them the credit that a lot of them feel they deserve because of it. But look, he is not that. He has made phenomenal adjustments. He has kept that team relevant. He has turned this team into a finals appearance team pretty much in a matter of a year and a half, two years of putting it together. Um, and uh, you gotta, you gotta give Pat Riley credit for, 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 for molding this guy and more or less instilling in him all of that good stuff that he had himself. And what you're seeing is an extension of Pat Riley in Eric Spolstra, and Eric Spolstra is uh, at, 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 a, at a height that I never knew he would reach. And my respect level for him matches that, and I expect our team uh, to go in with that same respect. Uh, he knows LeBron. LeBron knows him. I believe that that's going to play out in this series. We will see those advantages um, rear their heads for these respective teams. You're going to see that. Um, so, yeah, that's what I got, man. I'm going I'm to let this video go. Um, I probably have more to say. I'll just make another video. Thank you guys for watching. My name is BDF44. The Lakers are in the finals. The Heat are in the finals. And uh, I got the Lakers in five. For now, we'll see how it goes. Thank you guys for watching. My name is BDF. I'm out.